where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I am Roger Killen, the organizer. This talk is brought to you by Ion Connect, the state-of-the-art co-working space and tech lab helps grow innovative ideas to commercialization and market launch. Our speaker this evening is David Monteith. David is an outsourcing strategist and the CFO and co-founder of Great Work Online. As an outsourcing strategist, David works with business owners to help them achieve freedom in their business by identifying where they are stuck on their business and freeing up their time to allow them to work in their business. Fellow business, Vancouver Business Network members and most welcome guests, I invite you now to put your hands together and give the one and only David Monteith a warm BBN welcome. Thank you, Roger. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody for a warm welcome. Uh, as Roger said, my name is David Monteith. Uh, I'll talk a little bit in just a second, a little bit more about who I am, but our topic tonight is how to gain one extra day a week by outsourcing the right way. And during the, the, the question or introduction section earlier, a number of you mentioned that you have experience with outsourcing, but it hasn't always been a positive experience. And that's what I was alluding to with the outsourcing the right way. Uh, doesn't mean that there's only one way to effectively outsource. It just means that there are ways that are more positive and some ways that don't always work out so well. So hopefully I can give you guys some education tonight, give you some tips, some ideas on how to effectively move forward with outsourcing to make it a success for you and for your business. So who is David? Everybody wants to know. Uh, I have a number of titles. Um, used to be coach, used to be, you know, Spencer's dad, all that kind of stuff. It wasn't until my kids all got out of high school that I started to gain back my own personal identity. Uh, I was always, you know, coach David, I was so-and-so's dad, I was carpool dad, I was all of this. Uh, I've always worked kind of half self-employed and half corporately employed, but had a very flexible schedule. So kids field trips, I was always the only dad. It was me and the moms. So it, uh, it was nice when my kids all graduated from high school and I started to be able to gain back my own identities. So I am a dad, I'm a future husband, um, I've been engaged uh, for almost a year. It'll be a year next week. Um, and for anybody asking, no, we haven't set a wedding date yet. We haven't even talked about it. Uh, and I am an entrepreneur. Uh, my entire adult life, uh, actually even before I was really an adult, I've bounced back and forth between self-employment and corporate life. And I would be self-employed and I would get into something that I was really passionate about. And then I would get a job offer. And I'm like, ooh, regular paychecks and all these things. So I'd go off into a corporate job and very quickly I would say, ooh, nine to five, I have to get up and put pants on, I've got to listen to somebody telling me what to do all the time and I'd go back to being an entrepreneur and start another business. Uh, currently, according to LinkedIn, which I wrote, so uh, I'm an outsourcing strategist and a financial educator. I am a business partner. Uh, I'm involved in two different businesses right now. Uh, I am a digital nomad, which can mean different things to different people. Some people think digital nomad means toes in the sand, laptop laying on the beach. Uh, I can honestly tell you that concept really doesn't work because the Wi-Fi on the beach sucks. <laughs> Even if you can find a beach with Wi-Fi and there are beaches that do have Wi-Fi, which really is a bad idea all around. Uh, being a digital nomad doesn't mean always following the sun, always living on a beach, always, you know, we see all these, you know, no offense, but all the YouTubers that are putting up their travel videos constantly. And uh, I've worked with a number of those people and I know that that isn't really what they do every day. For me, being a digital nomad just means having personal freedom. Um, I have set my businesses up and I'm scaling my business so that I can work from anywhere. A lot of people use the term independent or de location independence, where I can work in Vancouver, I can work in the Philippines, where I spend the more majority of my time. Uh, my, my fiance and my business partner and I travel all over and we work from wherever we happen to be as long as we have good strong wi-fi maybe a cell phone signal so we can make some phone calls um, so that's that's to me what being a digital nomad is uh, i am a speaker i suddenly realized here over the last couple of years that this is probably about the 30th or 40th presentation that i've given in the last three or four years and i never started out to be a speaker i didn't really have any ambitions to that i've just kind of fallen into it and i think i really enjoy it but I wish I was going to be able to be here next week 
to listen to Dorothea. I'm sure I could pick up some great tips from that, but I will actually be on an airplane when this meeting happens next week. So um, this is just a picture of uh, myself and Pam, my business partner, my fiance. Uh, back in August of this year, no, sorry, September of this year, we were guest speakers and panelists at the Working Remote Conference in Manila. And it was a conference that was geared mainly towards people in office jobs or labor jobs that wanted to become self-employed. They wanted to become freelancers. They wanted to be able to take the skills that they had or learn how to develop skills to be able to have some control over their life, not have to commute to an office. We talked a little bit about that last week, about how traffic in a lot of places like India and the Philippines, uh, some places in South America where the traffic is horrific beyond anything we are used to here in Metro Vancouver. Although the next three days, we might be really close to that. If the transit strike actually happens, um, we may be experiencing some of that. But it was a really interesting conference because there were people who genuinely wanted to learn about how to change their life. And it was, it was really a lot of fun and really eye-opening to be a part of that. So what is outsourcing? I know we went around the room earlier, and it seemed about two-thirds of the room has some experience with outsourcing. Uh, some of it not so positive, some of it worked out really well, some of you have ongoing relationships with outsourcing. So basically outsourcing is the practice of sending certain job functions, different uh, activities that you have outside of your company instead of doing them internally. So you, you could even take that a little further that if, if you hire an employee, you're actually outsourcing internal, kind of a, an oxymoron. Uh, but anytime you're taking work that you as an entrepreneur, you as the business owner, you as the CEO, and you take that work off of your plate and put it onto somebody else's plate, you're effectively outsourcing. What I'm more specifically talking about is outsourcing completely outside of your company, whether it's engaging with an individual or a group of individuals or engaging with a company that will manage all of that for you. And we'll talk about the different possibilities and the different options as we go through here. So there's a number of benefits of outsourcing. Number one for me, in my personal experience in outsourcing as, as the client of an outsourcing was stress relief. It was being able to take a certain amount of activities and be able to get those off of my plate and onto somebody else's. Freed up tons of time, lowered my stress level because I know that things are getting taken care of even though I'm not necessarily the one doing those. And for me, the biggest thing that changed when I started outsourcing was things were getting done that weren't being done before. And I'm sure as entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, small business people, we all know that there's only so many hours in the clock every day. And some of us try and beat that by working 12, 14, 16 hours a day in order to get everything done. And other of us who don't wanna work quite that hard. I love being self-employed, I love growing my business, but I don't want to work 12 or 14 hours a day. I could go and get a job and have a whole lot less stress if that's what I'm gonna to have to do. The biggest part for me of being self-employed is having some freedom in my calendar, in my schedule, and not being chained to my desk. And for me, how I was able to accomplish that is there was a lot of things in the background that weren't getting done. I was doing the work, I was getting the work done, but I wasn't doing things like social media marketing. I wasn't doing email marketing. I wasn't replying to, people would send me messages on social media and I would see that two or three days later because I just didn't have the time to be logged into Facebook or logged into LinkedIn all day to be reacting to those. It allowed me to focus on my strengths. And it, we all are really good at something. And most of the entrepreneurs that I meet have come out of corporate life and they were really good at something, whether it was a you know, C-level executive or whether they were mid-level management or mid-level workers, they were really good at what they did, but they got tired or disillusioned with corporate life. They didn't want the nine to five. They didn't want to wear the suits all day. They didn't want to commute. They didn't want to travel. They wanted a little bit of ability to do what they love to do. So they decide, I'm going to start my own business. And only then do they realize that they can't start a business and just do what it is you used to do. That there's all the things in the background that have to be done. There's the marketing that has to be done. There's the bookkeeping that has to be done. There's all of this follow-up with clients, prospective clients. So it allows you to focus on what you're really good at and outsource the things that you're not. And there's a, a phrase that I, I keep hearing from other people, and it's, Focus on your strengths and outsource your weaknesses. And that just makes so much sense to me. And that's hopefully what I can kind of uh, help you to, to understand as we go through this. Benefit of outsourcing, you can hire experts 
from anywhere, wherever those experts happen to be, because they're not going to come to your office at nine o'clock every morning and sit at a desk that you're going to provide them, they can literally be anywhere. They use the term virtual assistant for a reason, it is because they are out there somewhere in the universe. They don't physically have to be where you are. They certainly don't have to be in your office or in your city or in your province or your country or your continent. Uh, the Philippines is probably the largest single supply com country of outsourced labor, of freelancers. Uh, part of that is their population. They have over 100 million population in the Philippines. Uh, geographically, the Philippines would fit inside British Columbia about three times over, just to be took the land mass. British Columbia has a population of about four and a half million, five million. And just imagine if we had 100 million people here let alone 300 million if we used up all of our land mass. So it's, the Philippines has, has literally millions of people that are outsourcing in different activities um, in different ways. Cost effective. It is generally, not always, but generally you can hire somebody, outsource an activity to somebody or a task to somebody for less than what you would have to pay a physical person here in Vancouver. Uh, and I say it's not always the case, uh, minimum wage is what now, 12, 75, something like that. Uh, you can hire people for a lot of tasks for significantly less than 12, 75 an hour. But you run into the same issue that you run into here locally or anywhere else. There's a lot of you get what you pay for. And I hear people, they're outsourcing experts who say, you know, outsource to Venezuela, outsource to the Philippines, outsource to India. I hire people for $2 an hour or $1.70. It's like it's a competition to see who can pay the less, the least amount. And I really try and discourage that because if you want less than optimal results, then yes, you can hire people for dollars an hour. If you want to get good quality people, you're going to pay for those. Or you're going to learn the hard way. You're going to pay for poor quality and as you search for that person. And Dennis, you had the, the perfect example. And you had a great way of going about it. Um, you know, I've done similar things. I haven't done 10, but you know, you made a, a great experiment there where you just hired 10 people to produce a sample exactly. for me. And if you had tried to do that one at a time, a year later, and you know, you may have gotten lucky and found your superstar on the first or second or third try, but you may not have found him until your eighth or ninth or 10th try. And would you have even kept going? If you, you know, if you had six people that gave you terrible results or took your money and ran away, you're probably gonna go, oh no, outsourcing is a scam, I'm never gonna do that again. So uh, it can be very cost effective in that you can pay less for certain activities and you can help to increase your revenue as a, as a benefit of that. Outsourcing isn't gonna increase your revenues, it's gonna decrease your expenses, but it's gonna free up your time and give you more time to do what you're good at. If you're good at sales in your business or if you're the only person that can sell your widget, then your time is best spent out there selling your widget, however that is, whether you're going to conferences or trade shows or you're on the phone or you're doing videos uh, and it's not being spent doing bookkeeping and trying to decide what funny quote to put for Friday on your Facebook page. Uh, that's not good use of your time or your money. And free up your time. This was the other big one for me. It was getting stuff done that I wasn't doing and it has allowed me to free up so much time to be able to focus on my clients. So I, I first got involved in outsourcing uh, about three years ago and I was doing it for a business that I'm running here in Vancouver and I slowly became more involved in the business that I'm with. The company is called Great Work Online and I use outsourcing a lot for my other business and I use it more and more every week. I'm using more time of my virtual assistant, of my project manager, of my graphic artist. I'm using more and more hours of their time every week in building great work online. So it's, it's helping me, I've either got to do this stuff or I've got to outsource it to somebody. And I would much rather spend time hanging out with my beautiful bride-to-be, drinking coffee and enjoying life than both of us working 12 hours a day, which we could really easily do. So where do I find a freelancer? And some of you had mentioned a, a couple of uh, specific companies. Upwork is probably the most well-known uh, freelance, directory, database, uh, marketplace, probably the most well-known one here in North America. Upwork, um, I did a, it, yeah, just upwork.com. Uh, I did a Google search and I came up with in like 
the first two pages, I came up with 12 different websites that listed, you know, the top 50 outsourcing or freelance website, the top 75, the top 10. There are literally thousands of websites out there where you can find freelancers. Uh, you can find freelancers here locally on Craigslist. You go through the marketplace thing on Craigslist, you got people, hey, I'll do your this for this much money, I'll do your that for that much money. Uh, so the best way to find if you're looking to outsource a specific task is ask for referrals. Don't go out searching for that website that nobody's ever heard to find some deal that nobody's ever had. Uh, ask your business, your people in your networking groups, your business partner, ask your competitors, ask around to find where they're doing this sort of activity. Uh, we talked a little bit of online hiring portals. There are thousands of them. Um, some are better known, some are lesser known. Personally, I would stay away from one that, you know, read, read the English in the website. Uh, if the English isn't North American quality, you probably want to steer clear of that particular portal. Uh, stick with the bigger names, Upwork, Odesk, I guess, merged with Upwork. Um, and it just stick with ones that where you've got people that have experience with North American clients. If you're going to go directly to these portals, ask them for referrals. For, you want to talk to people that have worked with them before. You want to see samples of their work like what Dennis did. You know, here's a project. Show me what you can do. You want to see samples of what these people are doing. Don't just hire them because Upwork, they have all positive things. Doesn't mean it's going to be positive you for you. You can outsource that too. Absolutely. Um, you know, hey, hire but me for it. Well, it's like Google reviews. You know, it, there's companies out there, hey, I can give you a thousand positive Google reviews in two months. You may not have had a thousand clients in the history of your business, but you can have a thousand positive Google reviews. Might cost you 500 or a thousand dollars in a couple of months to get them. Just because they're there doesn't mean they're real. Uh, agencies that match freelancers. There's a number and a growing number of agencies where you go to them and say, hey, I need somebody who can do a doodle video for me. And they will match you up with a doodle artist. Or I need somebody to do my bookkeeping. You might go to your accountant, you might, you know, things like this, where they will match you with a person to be able to do that. It's also a good way to go about it if you're looking for one or two very specific tasks. Can you talk about Fiverr a little bit? Because sure. Probably a lot of people yeah, yeah. Um, Fiverr is sort of a freelance thing. It sort of is, but sort of isn't. Fiverr is much more a one-off kind of thing. I need a logo, I need a website, I need a business card, uh, I need a specific project or topic taken care of. And then normally your relationship with somebody on Fiverr will be a one-time thing. You might go back to that same person if you had a positive experience, um, but generally it's a, you know, I need this done, you get it done and you move on. Uh, in my personal experience with Fiverr, I've, I've experimented a little bit with it, just sort of sampling what's going on there. I've never gotten anything done for five bucks. I think they need to change the name of their website to 20 year or something like that. My multiple fiver. Um, and again, it comes down to that you pay what you get for, or you get what you pay for. If you want to hire somebody and you're only going to pay them $5, regardless of where they live economically, you're going to get a $5 product, which in any economy is not a good thing. If you want a logo done for your business that's going to be professional and acceptable to, to the clients that you're after, a good logo is going to cost you a minimum, minimum of $100. And people are going, well, I could hire somebody in North America to do that. You probably good. could get really close. Uh, again, that whole economies thing, it's, you know, $100 in, in a place like India or Venezuela or the Philippines goes a whole lot further than $100 does here. And in my personal opinion, you're going to get much better value spending 50 or 60 or $100 on somebody working at distance than you are trying to hire somebody in Vancouver. Because a good graphic artist in Vancouver is going to charge $100 or $200 an hour, and you're not going to get a logo in 30 minutes, at least not one that's, that's going to be of any value. Uh, full service agencies. There are agencies out there where you go to them and say, hey, I need this and this. Um, can you supply me with this person and that person and this person? It's kind of like the the, the uh, agencies that match freelancers. It's a little bit of, you know, your personality, the style of what you're after, the quality, what you're willing to pay. Uh, and they will match you up with those individual people. But you still end up having to do a lot of management on your own. Uh, missed the number on that one. The last one was 
is hiring a team-based agency. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, Great Work Online, the company that I have, we are what we call a team-based agency, where instead of coming to us and hiring a virtual assistant to do one job or a graphic artist to do one design, uh, typically our clients come to us with a number of different needs and we're able to take care of all of those. And the challenge with doing that on a one by one by one basis is you can end up with a full-time job managing your outsourced team. And the last thing you wanna do is outsource to save yourself some time to free up so you can work with your clients and end up spending most of that time back having to manage all these individual people in different time zones with different language skills. Uh, but we'll get more into that a little bit, little spoiler there. So what can you outsource? As a solopreneur, as a business owner, as a CEO of your company, what things can you possibly outsource? And the simple answer is almost everything. The one exception that, that really comes to mind is if you need, if you run a retail store, whether you're selling a product or you're selling coffee, um, Starbucks would have a really hard time outsourcing their baristas. Uh, you don't want to go online and order a thing and it's just not going to work very well. So if you have a brick and mortar business, you're going to have a certain need for physical employees. But anything that can be done at distance that can be transmitted by video or by email or Dropbox, uh, Google Drive, any project-based stuff, any uh, virtual type work that can be done is very easy to be outsourced. The number one request that we get is social media management. Probably 90% of the people that, that inquire with us, the first thing on their list of things they wanna outsource is their social media. Nobody likes doing social media. And the few people who like it, very few of those are very good at it. When I started doing social media for my business, I thought I'm the only person that can create this stuff because I understand my business. I'm the only one who can provide quality work. And as wrong as that thought was, it might have been good if I actually took the time and did it. And that was my number one thing. The first thing that I outsourced was my social media management because I thought I had to do it and I knew that I could do a really great job, but it was stuff that was falling into that hour 15 and hour 16 that I just never got to. Uh, research, whether it's market research, you're researching around, you know, you might have a new product or service idea. You want to find out what the rest of the world is doing already uh, in relation to that. You might want to do a little spying on your competition. Uh, I'm a big advocate of that. Uh, it's uh, why recreate something from scratch when you can take an idea from somebody. Don't copy it. Don't plagiarize it. Don't steal what they're doing, but use their ideas. Take techniques that they're using, take ideas that they're using for social media, for, for their marketing, and run with that. Change it, tweak it, make it yours, but don't reinvent something from scratch necessarily. Uh, graphic design, another huge one. Uh, as entrepreneurs, as business owners, we're capable of a lot of things. And I know everybody in here is going to have a reasonable amount of technology skills. They can do email. They, can, they understand Facebook. They're users of Facebook. If you can do email and you're a little bit creative, just a little bit, you can do social media marketing. Doesn't mean you're gonna do a really good job of it. Because if you're not a graphic artist, if you can't visualize things, if you're not a creative mind or a creative personality, your posts are gonna look terrible. Trust me, ask me how I know this. <laughs> Website development and maintenance. Uh, this is, is one that kills me. I get so many people, less now, because I seem to be able to, to weed them out a little faster, but I will have people that phone me up, yeah, I need a website done. I need seven pages and my budget is $500. And those are really quick conversations because we don't even start in websites until we're somewhere into four figures. If you want a $500 seven page website, go to Fiverr, go to a high school, go somewhere and get somebody to build you a website like that. It's not going to be optimized for mobile. You're not gonna get any SEO done. Your graphics are all gonna be stock graphics that somebody downloaded somewhere off the internet. You probably should have paid for them, but you didn't. Uh, and so many people wanna develop their own websites. WordPress has given people the skill, not the skill, 
the confidence, the ability to create their own websites. I guarantee you anybody in this room could create a WordPress website over the course of a couple of days. You're not gonna be proud of the product. You're not gonna to wanna to publish it because it's not going to reflect who you are, who your business is. It's going to use downloaded, remember ClickArt back in the 90s and the early 2000s? Microsoft would bring out a new version of Word with 10,000 new pieces of ClickArt. And we used to use all those things. I used to do them myself in memos and posters at the office. Now they go up in the bulletin board with the ClickArt food things, telling people to clean up the fridge at the end of the week. You need to have a well thought out plan before you build a website. Even if your business is such that you only need a one page website, don't just grab a word processor and type out some words and publish it to the internet as your website. You need to put a lot of thought into the design, the look, the feel, are the colors gonna match who you are and what you reflect. Uh, I mentioned a, a couple of people in here mentioned that they're involved in branding. And this all comes down to branding. You don't wanna start developing your website until you have some sort of a brand in your brain of what you're trying to do. And branding is not a logo. It is not a website. It's not a business card. Those are all reflections of your brand. But until you have in your mind what you want to present to the world, don't start spending money on graphic arts and on websites until you have a really good plan. And uh, just to go back here, maintenance. Uh, so many people will pay for a website. I've, we've run into people that have paid thousands and thousands of dollars for a website and then done zero with it. No SEO, no updating of information, no modernizing it. Uh, I've seen, met people where they've got a really nice looking business card. They've got really nice looking email signature when they send you an email and you look at their website and it's eight years old. The little copyright thing on, on the bottom of it is, you know, 2009 and 2011. They haven't updated these things. You need to make sure that you keep your website current. And again, WordPress has emboldened a lot of people to think that they can manage their own websites. And unless you want to, unless you have a programming background, WordPress is not difficult to do at a basic level, but it's very difficult to do correctly. And unless you have a really technical mind or experience in programming or web development, stay out of your website. We have clients all the time that will you know, we've developed a site in WordPress and they understand enough of how to get in there and change something around and inevitably all wake up or our crew in, in the Philippines will wake up in the morning to panicked emails. My website's down because they hit a backspace somewhere they didn't realize and they hit save and it nuked their whole website. Sophia. What about uh, Wix? Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, again, it comes down to the quality. Oh, sorry. Um, the question was, what about websites like Wix and other companies that offer sort of done for you web pages or landing pages? And it really comes down to the quality that you want to portray for your business. Um, if you want to portray professionalism, uh, I can't think of one mainstream, well-respected business. And I don't mean to, to insult anybody here, but I have not seen one professionally looking Wix website. Uh, unless, like the free Wix website even has the Wix branding all over it. If you're going to go that way, spend the $20 or whatever it is to remove the Wix branding. Have your own URL. So it's you know www.mybusiness.com rather than mybusiness.wix.com. Uh, spend that little bit of money to do that. But if you want to portray a professional image to people, if you want your brand to be consistent across everything that you do, spend the money to properly brand and get a proper website built. Uh, a lot of people think in, in the beginning of, of, of when websites were becoming popular, and back in the late 90s, I was actually a, a website developer. And this was before things like Front Page and all these WYSIWYG type programs. Uh, I used Microsoft, what's it called, Notepad? notepad or wordpad back in the late 90s uh, I developed websites by hand coding every word of code and everybody thinks now oh I have to have an eight page website I have to have a 12 page website because I have to tell everybody about everything that I do most businesses need a single page website you know the, the style that's in right now is the long scrolling websites you'll have a menu at the top where you can click to jump halfway down a page but as soon as you get into multiple pages, your cost of maintenance or the complexity of maintenance goes up exponentially.
because if you make a change, you've got to make sure that those changes happen across the whole thing. Uh, enough preaching on bad websites. Um, bookkeeping. Who here loves doing bookkeeping? Not even one, one, one half hand up. Everybody hates bookkeeping. I have a number of friends that are accountants, um, CPAs and, and some that don't have the designation but have lots of experience. And they all have a love-hate relationship with clients that bring them a shoebox in March or April of every year. Uh, I spent a number of years as a partner in an accounting business uh, out in the Valley. And we loved our clients that would come in with shoebox. We had one that would bring in a black glad garbage bag. So nothing was sorted. It wasn't sorted by month or by category or anything. They would bring in literally a black garbage bag and we would dump it out on the floor and we would sit down and sort all this stuff out into some sort of, of, of order and then input it all into an accounting system. And we loved it because we were kind of geeky that way and we loved going through this stuff and we charged our clients a huge amount of money to do that. Uh, nobody likes bookkeeping and even people who enjoy numbers, oh, I'm good at math, I'll do my own bookkeeping. Outsource your bookkeeping. Hire a bookkeeper, get your accountant to recommend somebody, pay your kids. If you've got high school or, or you know, young adult kids, pay them, build an Excel spreadsheet, do whatever. Do not, as a business owner, do your own bookkeeping. Video editing. Uh, Roger, at the beginning, we had to restart. Uh, it was an issue with the slide thing. And he, he mentioned the, the wonders of video editing. Uh, all of us probably have the technical skills to edit video. It's not really difficult to do it at a basic level. Uh, when I started doing my own videos, I would do it where I would hit play, and I'd go in and stand in front of the camera, and I'd count to three, and then I would start talking. And at the end, I would do my sign off, and I would stand there and not move for another three seconds. And it made my editing really simple. I'd go in and chop out the last two seconds and the first two seconds, and there's my edited video. Now that I have seen what an actual video editor can do, I'm blown away. And I can't believe that I ever spent time trying to figure out how to trim the beginning and end of my videos. Uh, video editing is not cheap, but it is very valuable. Uh, it can make your videos go from, yeah, they kind of sort of know what they're talking about to, wow, that person is a professional. Because you can cut out all the little ums and ahs in the middle. If you make a mistake, you can stop, hold still for a couple seconds, restart, and your video editor can clean that up so it looks really good. Uh, it's, yeah, enough said on that topic. We'll move on. Blog writing. This is another one of those things that only I could do for my business. I'm the only one who understands my business, let alone that there's 20,000 people in Canada doing the exact same thing that I do but I'm the only one who could write my blogs. Five and a half years in with that business, guess how many blog articles I've written? You're close, but you're ambitious. Absolutely zero. Five and a half years later, I've got, I have, I use Evernote. Evernote's one of my favorite products. And I have literally hundreds of articles saved in there with the tag blog. And one of these days, I'm going to actually sit down and I'm going to write one blog article. I just want to do one, and then I'm going to outsource the rest because I want to be able to show uh, an editor or a copywriter who's going to do this for me. I want them to be able to see a little bit of my style and my personality. Again, I'm not writing blogs from scratch. I'm not going to sit down and come up with a whole topic that nobody's ever thought of before and write words that nobody has ever written before. I am going to find good quality content that another writer has produced and I'm gonna change it around to meet my own personality. It's gonna be well edited. Nobody's gonna be able to do a Google thing and say that I plagiarized their work, but it's getting started to do that. And five and a half years later, I have done zero. And I know that when I finally in the new year turn it over to a copywriter, that I'm gonna be having blogs coming out on a weekly basis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, I just write a book. <laughs> I can barely write emails. I need to outsource my emails. So how do you create freedom? Uh, we talked, you know, the, the topic of my, or the title of my, my talk is, you know, how to gain an extra day a week by outsourcing. And for me, outsourcing and freedom are synonymous. synonymous. Uh, I wanna be that digital nomad. I wanna be able to do what I wanna do, when I wanna do it, where I wanna do it. So for me, it was all about freedom. It wasn't about having that laptop lifestyle. 
it wasn't about sitting on the beach with my toes in the sand and my laptop. It's also a really bad idea because there's lots of sand on beaches. It doesn't go well with laptops. So for me, freedom was being able to get rid of things that I wasn't good at and didn't enjoy and focus on what I did enjoy in my business and what I was good at. So the first step is to identify what tasks is it that you need to get free? Is it bookkeeping? Is it doing Facebook posts? Is it writing blogs? Is it maintaining your website? Is it editing your videos? Is it writing the cute little things that are gonna go on your Facebook posts? Whatever it may be for you, and every one of us in here all have different businesses, we all have different things that we're good at and that we're not good at, that we enjoy and that we don't enjoy. So task one is discovering what it is you wanna get rid of. And then task two is identifying who's gonna do these things. Where am I going to find a resource that I can pass this on to that can do this better than I can, or at least as good as I can, if not better, and is going to be able to do the things that I don't enjoy doing. As a business owner, if you have something that you're really good at and you really enjoy doing it, don't outsource it. You don't have to outsource every activity. A good friend of mine is an engineer, owns his own engineering consulting firm. And he's always talking about going home on Fridays or Thursdays or Wednesdays in the summer. I got to go home. I got to cut my grass. And he lives on two and a half acres. And I keep saying, I'm like, why are you cutting your grass? You can hire some neighborhood kid for 10 bucks an hour that will cut your grass and you can stay at work. And in those three or four hours, it's going to take him. You can make three or $4,000 in that same time. And he shakes his head. He goes, yeah. I says, but I've got a beer holder on my ride on lawnmower. And he said, Riding the lawnmower and cutting my grass is where I solve all of my problems. And I'm like, okay, I take it back. Don't outsource that activity. Economically, it makes zero sense for him to cut his grass. 10 bucks an hour versus hundreds of dollars an hour. But that's what gives him relaxation. And that's where he solves those big $10,000 and $100,000 problems. And so it's, it's something that he shouldn't be doing, but because it gives him a huge benefit, he's continued to do that. So a little bit of, of work. I should have had paper to hand out. Uh, if you've got paper, grab a sheet. If you don't, just remember this really good. And I can send you this slide or you'll see it on the video. We're going to create three lists. So you can do it virtually in your head or you can do it physically on a, on a piece of paper. The first one is list out tasks that you hate or even don't like doing. And those might be things like managing your email. We have a number of clients where we have a virtual assistant that goes through their email, sifts out what's not important, gets rid of all the junk mail, the, the things that don't require a response, the things where they're CC'd with 40 other people, and they distill it down to important emails and put those into a folder. Um, managing your social media. A lot of us are Facebook junkies. I'm kind of like that, yeah. Um, more and more, I'm spending more personal time on LinkedIn than I am on Facebook. And that's just from a consumption standpoint. I'm getting more value out of spending a half an hour in the afternoon going through LinkedIn than I ever got in hours and hours on Facebook. Uh, handling basic product inquiries or basic service inquiries. This can be done with a virtual assistant. This can be done with chatbots um, on either on Facebook, through Messenger, or right on your website, uh, and research. So those are things that most of us probably don't enjoy doing. Next list is going to be tax, tasks that you have no idea how to do. And again, as entrepreneurs, we're like, I can figure everything out. I'm the only one who can do this. I keep coming back to that. Uh, the first one, designing graphic images or logos. Unless you are a creative and you're in the graphics business or you're an artist, don't do your own graphic design. Don't go and steal stuff off of, do a Google search and take something and use it for your Facebook posts. Uh, developing your website, we talked about that. Yes, we can all do it, but we really shouldn't be doing it because we really don't know what we're doing with it. Uh, editing podcast, editing video, editing blog posts. Even if you want to write your own blogs, have somebody edit it. Don't write a blog and post it. Get somebody to read that over. Uh, and bookkeeping or other data entry. Uh, we have a client who has a project where we're taking stuff off of a web form and we're transposing that into a spreadsheet. And I know there's probably some way we could probably hire a developer to build something to do it. And it's not as easy as copying and pasting it. it the, the formats are all different. 
but our client was doing that themselves for years. And then they finally got to the point where didn't have enough hours in the day. And he's now getting that done at a fraction of the cost of what his time was worth. And in a fraction of the time, it took a couple of days for the VA to kind of pick up the thing on it. And now he's doing it in like an hour, two hours a week, what was taking the entrepreneur three or four, because he's not getting interrupted by phone calls and, and sitting on his email all day. And the final one is tasks that you know and feel you shouldn't be doing. It kind of falls into the whole lawn mowing thing with my buddy. There are things that you have the skill for that you might even enjoy doing, but doesn't make financial sense for you to do it. So unless it's something that gives you stress relief, unless it's something that gives you time to you know, be mindless and dwell on all the problems of the world or the problems of your business, things that you shouldn't be doing. And these are things like updating your social media. Updating social media is not a $100 an hour activity that you as a business owner should be engaging in. It's depending on, on what's being done as far as the design and all that, it's a $10 or $20 an hour activity. Uh, managing blogs. Again, you can hire a ghostwriter, a copywriter to do this stuff. Once they understand a little bit about what you're trying to write about, and if you're in a really technical um, industry, you have really technical topics, you might need to find a very specific writer or editor to do that. But if you're just writing general blogs about what you do in your business, you can teach somebody to do that. You can show them some samples. You can show them something you've personally written so they understand a bit of your style and get somebody else to be doing that stuff. And again, unless your blogs are highly technical and you're the only expert that can do those. Uh, transcribing and editing videos. Uh, transcribing is when you take the audio and you turn it into words, either as a transcript or to display along the bottom of your videos if that's what you want to do. That is not an activity that the typical business person should be spending their time doing. There are people that can do it much cheaper. There's websites that do it automatically, but even those websites need to have a person going through and looking at what, what's coming out of it. Um, I've done a bunch of videos on Facebook and I've used the Facebook transcribe function and it's pretty close, but it will mess up punctuation and line breaks and things like that. So you still have to go in and clean that up. Not something the entrepreneur should be doing. And project management. Project management in, in my context here is managing all of these different moving pieces. And we talk, I, I mentioned a little earlier that you can hire a, a VA to do this and a graphic artist to do this and a copywriter to do this, but then you have to manage all of those people. And you have to make sure that when the graphic artist has done their part, that it goes to the copywriter. When the copywriter has done their part, it goes to the VA and the VA checks it and schedules it. Uh, if you're going to do all of those activities, you're probably gonna spend less time and less money just doing it yourself. Don't let outsourcing become a job. Use outsourcing to relieve the amount of time that you're spending on all of these activities. Use it as a way to leverage your time to make more money. So as the CEO of your business, it's your responsibility to be available for your client or clients. If you work, if your, your business depends on people buying your product, whether it's a service or a widget, they, ex they depend on your expertise. That's how you make your money, is trading your expertise for money. Then the only way for you to make money is to be available to your clients. You don't wanna tell your client, oh, sorry, I didn't get a chance to work on the coaching that we're gonna do next week because I was, had to file my GST return last week. Your client's not gonna care about that. They're not gonna care if you say, oh, sorry, I can't meet our coaching thing. I can't meet our delivery date on this because I was updating my Facebook post last week. Those are things that your clients don't care about. You as a business owner need to have as many hours as possible available to be available for your clients so that when they're calling, you're able to answer and help them. And you can't do that if you're busy doing all of these other activities. So how do you move forward? Number one, determine what tasks that you need to outsource and then what you want to outsource. When we're starting out, we're doing all these things ourselves. We've got low budgets. If you're brand new in your business, you don't have a lot of money to invest in outsourcing. So you're gonna be doing all these things yourself, but as quick as you can, start determining which of those tasks, which of those activities are better invested in somebody else doing them. So if you've got one or two tasks to do, if you've got a bunch of data that needs to go from this program into this spreadsheet, or if you've got 
all you need is somebody to schedule your social media. You're going to create it all. You just need somebody to make sure it gets posted on time. You can go to a website like Upwork. You might find somebody on Fiverr that offers that service. You might find somebody local that offers that service. And if you've only got one or two and they're simple activities, it's a great thing for you to go directly and hire a virtual assistant or a data entry person to do those things for you. If you have many tasks, if you have, you come up with your list and you've got four things that you have to get rid of and two or three or four things that you want to get rid of, be careful of falling into the pit of creating a job of managing all these different moving pieces. It's not cost effective to save an hour a day doing a certain activity by outsourcing if you have to spend 10 or 15 minutes every day checking their work or giving them new work or monitoring what they're doing. So you have the options of going alone and self-managing, which again, a couple of tasks you can self-manage probably pretty well. If you've got four or six or eight or 10 different tasks that need to be done, you're going to create a job for yourself in doing that. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Or you can hire a team, which is where we make the big segue. Uh, the company that, that I'm with is called Great Work Online. And we provide what we call a team approach to outsourcing. So if, if we have a client, we'll phone us up and say, hey, I really need somebody who can write a blog once a month for me. We're not gonna take that client on. They're not, not what we, they don't need to spend the money with us in order to do that. They can accomplish that much simpler by finding a blog writer themselves and working directly with that person. But if you've got a business where you need somebody to do blog writing and you need somebody to do graphic design and you need a copywriter and you need social media done and you need video editing done and you wanna produce a podcast and you wanna build your way into outsourcing all of these activities, that's where we specialize in. We provide an entire team of people to our clients and it starts with, always starts with a project manager. Uh, we have two full-time project managers, plus Pam and myself. I do a little bit of project management. So we are the ones who will coordinate all of the work that the client needs to have done. So again, if, if you've got a one or two simple activities, you don't need the expense and the complexity of having a manager involved in that. But what the advantage of having a project manager can do for you is they will take over the management of all of the different moving pieces that you can outsource. So whether it's a virtual assistant, whether it's a website developer or somebody to maintain your website on a regular basis, an SEO specialist. A lot of people will build a website, post it, make it live, and then don't understand why nobody's going to their website. Uh, does anybody here understand what SEO is? About half the room, a little more than half the room. Uh, you know, you'll hear all the time people going, you know, if, if you want to get found on Google, if you want to, you know, and I get emails literally every day. I can rank you on the first page on Google. I can rank you on the first page of Google. Uh, those are mostly SEO specialists. And most of the ones that I've researched or talked to don't have any idea of how to get anybody anywhere in the top 10 pages on Google. SEO is, is a huge thing. And it's not, that's definitely an activity that you as a business owner cannot do unless your business happens to be as an SEO specialist. Graphic and web designer, um, I've come to learn that those are two different skills. Uh, somebody that can do graphic design is not necessarily the person you want who's going to design your website. Uh, we work with a bunch of different graphic artists, but we have one specifically who designs websites. She doesn't do logos, she doesn't do business cards, she doesn't do Facebook graphic posts, all she does is websites and she's the best one I've ever seen. Uh, there might be better ones out there, but I've never been in touch with them or seen their work. Uh, whereas regular graphic artists, not to take away from their skills, but designing websites is a whole different visual thing than designing a logo or a graphics piece or a post for social media. Social media specialists. This is one of the biggest things that we do. Um, virtually every one of our clients that we have, we do social media management for them. We do a bunch of other things, but across the board, we do social media for almost everybody. And video editing. Uh, again, it's, if you're doing simple videos, simple instruction videos where you've got to trim a couple seconds at either end, you can probably do that yourself very efficiently. 
if you're doing longer videos or more technical or you want to have a very polished look to your videos, you need to have a professional doing that to make it work. Uh, and one of the things I just want to pop back really quickly to social media specialist. Uh, I have learned in the last couple of years that there's so much more to effective Facebook posting strategy than just good looking posts. You can't just have a nice looking design, something that's appealing to the eye with great information in there. There are so many other things that we don't, that I never thought of myself were important. Uh, the time of day that you're posting. The time of day really, really matters. Uh, if you're posting at a time when your audience isn't online and isn't going to be online, if you post by the time they get to their Facebook, your post is going to be buried under a whole bunch of other things that are going on there. So you need to analyze who are your people, who's watching your social media, when are they online, when are they logging into Facebook, are they doing it first thing in the morning and then late at night, are they doing it during their work day, are they doing it on their lunch break, you need to find out when the people you're trying to target are going the best chance to see it. And then you do posts to try and meet those times and you monitor the activity. It's a lot of work to really effectively have a social media campaign. Yes? Um, okay, yeah. Um, the question is, do we have one specialist for all social media or specific ones for each platform? And my answer is a little bit of yes to both. Uh, we have people with the skills to be able to, to design and develop posts for LinkedIn, for Instagram, for Facebook, uh, not so much for Twitter. Twitter is a very personal, this is what I'm thinking right now kind of platform. Uh, but that being said, we do have specialists for, we use different specialists for Facebook and Google ads, and we use a different specialist for LinkedIn ads. There, I don't understand the difference, but clearly there is. Uh, and we have people that their specialty is LinkedIn advertising and doing ad campaigns on LinkedIn and one specifically that does Facebook. Uh, the posts themselves, a decent graphic artist can create because there are different image sizes. Each social media platform requires a different size and different ratio of, of graphic. And you'll see people that are trying to cut corners when you'll see on their LinkedIn where the left and right side is chopped off on the graphic that they're displaying. If you click on it, it'll come up and you'll get the advantage of the full, the full size. But if the graphics aren't sized properly for LinkedIn's requirements, your graphics are gonna look wonky when you post them on LinkedIn. If you just have one, like might use your Facebook one and use it on LinkedIn. It'll look great on Facebook, it's gonna look terrible on LinkedIn and vice versa. Uh, it's very inexpensive to have a graphic artist create one for this size and for that size. Uh, for this event, I had my graphic artist do up a couple of posts advertising and promoting this event. And when I got it, I got one for a Facebook banner, I got one for an Instagram post, one for a LinkedIn post, and one for a Facebook post. They're all, visually they're the same. They're the same colors, the same graphics, everything. They're just slightly different dimensions. And it makes all the difference in how professional your posts look. Questions? Yes? Uh, the last slide you mentioned, if you had, I forget the service you mentioned, just one service, you kind of said, well, they'll come see us for right. one. But you've listed quite a few on that slide. What if you only needed three of those? It, it, yeah, you don't have to have all of these services to, to take advantage of, of the type of service that we offer. And there are literally dozens, well, there's thousands of agencies that do what we do. We all have a slightly different approach to it. We all have you know, our sort of our flavors of, of what we do. Uh, and there is no hard and fast thing. Like we do have one client where we do their video editing. That's all we do for them. We took it on because they're potentially a huge client. Uh, we took on their video editing because they approached us for that and we saw the value, the long-term value of this client. And we're doing that and we're slowly taking on more and more projects because they've been happy with what we've done for the video editing. Um, it's really a cost thing for the client. If all you need is just somebody to write blogs, I can introduce you to a blog writer, an editor, copywriter, who will work directly with you for less cost than what we would have to charge in order to facilitate that for you. Now, that being said, if you're busy in your business and you don't have time to work with a blog writer, and then there's more to just, than just writing the blog. The blog has to go somewhere. 
either onto your website or onto a blog site. So somebody's got to post that. It's not as simple as just writing it. There's a bunch of moving pieces. And for some people, it might be worth the investment to have one company take over all of those different pieces. Um, if all of you need is once a month, you need a banner done for a project or an event, and that's all you need help in outsourcing right now, you're probably going to be more cost effective to work directly with a graphic artist that has experience in that. Uh, but if you're a busy entrepreneur and you're trying to get rid of a bunch of these tasks so that you can concentrate on other things, the biggest danger of, of outsourcing those each individual tasks is you're going to end up with a new job managing all those moving pieces. So there's no specific, you know, if you've got two tasks, do it yourself. If you've got three, find somebody to, to do it for you. There's no magic number. It really comes down to the number of hours that are involved and the complexity of it. Um, does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Yes. So just so I understand your like business model a little bit. Um, so are you saying that when like you get a client who comes and use your services, hmm. do you like you have a, you pair them with other um, like out, uh, outsourcers throughout, or is it that you have like your own in-house team and you uh, okay. Like what's the yeah no good question um the question was when we're bringing on a new client or working with a new potential client uh do we have all of the resources that they might need or are we looking needing outside resources um and the answer to that is also yes and yes uh typically we have all the resources that the average typical client would need we have virtual assistants we have copywriters we have graphic artists we have web artists we have website developers we have you know, copywriters, all that. We have the whole gamut. Um, if a client came to us and they needed those things plus something very specialized, then we could either seek that person out, we could source that person, or they may already have somebody that's doing that. And we actually have one client right now where they came to us and said they wanted to hire us as a project manager only. She has her own team. Uh, she has a virtual assistant. She has a graphic artist. She has a copywriter she had built herself a job by managing all of these people. And so she's hired us and we manage her team for her. Um, and it was, we really debated about whether to, to do that or not, but it's worked out very, very well. And we've actually ended up using some of her people to do work for some of our other clients. Uh, we've discovered people that are really good at what they do and we're now using them um, on other projects that we have with other clients. So unless you have a very, spe a very specialized, very specific need, uh, we probably have somebody already where we have a relationship with them that we can use. Okay, one last question. Uh, what would you say your ideal uh, client would be? Like, like because I know some clients, uh, they never want to offer anything. They want to control everything. Yes. <laughs> yes, I, I was that person. <laughs> um, we've sort of built into a natural niche in our business where we work with a lot of uh, professional speakers and business coaches. Um, that's, it, it's just sort of how it worked out. We didn't start out our business and say, we're going to be a digital marketing agency for speakers and coaches. It's just our first couple of clients were in that industry and now we're getting referrals and recommendations to other people in that industry. Uh, but we work with uh, one of our biggest clients is actually a branding expert in the U S uh, he, he charges like his minimum fee to work with a client is somewhere in the mid five figures, 50 to $60,000 is what you've got to write a check in order to work with him for. Uh, and he outsources a number of, of those projects to us. Uh, but we have, you know, professional speakers, we have, um, corporate trainers, that sort of just sort of in that industry. Uh, and I was chatting with somebody before we started, I'm sorry, I forget who it was about how you have your niche but that will draw in people from the edges of that niche. You know, you're gonna market and promote yourself to whatever your niche market is going to be, but don't have blinders on. And if somebody comes to you from a different industry and wants to work with you, don't say no until you've sort of worked that out as to whether you're compatible to be able to work with them. All right, um, get through the last couple of slides. Roger. It, it really, really varies. Um, if you want to hire a standalone virtual assistant, somebody that doesn't, a, an activity that doesn't require a great degree of skill, you can hire a reasonable person direct, do a little bit of searching, ask for some referrals from people, uh, $5 an hour, 
US. Typically, they, they bill in US dollars. US is kind of the, the currency of the world. Uh, so if you've got a very simple project and you want to go direct and you want to have a direct relationship with a virtual assistant, plan on spending around $5 US an hour. You might find somebody a little less than that. If you've got specific needs, you might be looking a little more than that. Um, for us, the way we work with our clients, uh, more and more we're doing monthly billings. We're doing kind of like a retainer where we go through, we work out the type of work that needs to be done. We have a scope of the project and we will quote that on a dollar per month basis rather than a, you know, $4 an hour for this and $10 an hour for this and $30 an hour for that. Uh, we'll work out the scope of work that needs to be done and, and do it on a retainer basis. Yeah. All right. There is my contact information. Um, this will be on the YouTube video in a couple of days. If you want to take a photo of it, I've got a pile of business cards at the back as well. Um, but give everybody a second. I see a couple of cameras here. All right. We will move forward to the fun stuff. Uh, I come bearing two special offers tonight. The first one is a free collection of information and guides towards outsourcing from the how to outsource one project to how to work with a team. Uh, it's a, a bundle of PDF, different things that we've put together, completely free for everybody. Just send an, an email to info at greatworkonline.com and we will get that stuff out to you um, in the course of the next couple of days. The next one is a one-on-one -on -one consultation. So if you think that outsourcing might be a good solution for you, but you're not sure um, whether you've outsourced before, you're outsourcing currently, or you've never done it, uh, the best way to find out whether it's going to be effective for you, what we can do, what we can't do, and an idea of what, that, what your investment in that is going to be. Um, the best way to do that is to sit down with us for about 30 minutes on a Zoom call and myself or Pam or one of our project managers will go through what your business is, what you're doing now, what you want to change and things that you're trying to do. And we will kind of work out a bit of a mini plan for you. It's not going to be a full business plan. It's not going to be a full marketing plan, but it's a little bit of a guide to give you an idea of the type of activities that are easy for you to outsource and some things to work towards and some best practices on how to get there. Uh, normally we charge $50 US for that consultation call. We've knocked that down by half to $25 for that. And because on the radio driving in here, every second commercial was Black Friday this and Cyber Monday that, from now until midnight Friday Pacific Coast time, I'll be very specific with that, um, we're willing to do these calls for free for the next three days or three and a half days. Uh, so get in touch with me, send me an email at david at greatworkonline.com before midnight Friday BC time and we will get back to you and schedule you in a time to do a Zoom conference with you. And if you send me that email stamped before midnight on Friday, we will do that absolutely for free. If you want to do it into next week, just mention this, this talk or VBN, we'll do it for the $25. And any last questions before we go here? All right, thank you very much. Oh, sorry, one last one here, Jesse. I have, yes. It's a different kind of mentality. Like you can, you can sort of have them for a, a longer period if you can build a good yep. relationship with the person. Yeah, absolutely. It's, and, you know, full disclosure, when we're looking for new people, um, you know, we put stuff out on our Facebook groups. We have a group specifically geared towards virtual assistants and, and freelance graphic artists and all that. We'll put, things out on there, hey, we're looking for this skill, this talent. And if we don't get what it is that we need or what we're looking for, we go to online jobs, we go to Upwork, we go to Fiverr and uh, dot .ph. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we use these sites. I'm not saying that they're bad at all, but you have to do your homework. You have to. There's literally hundreds or thousands of websites to do that. Uh, the key is, is finding the right person to fit what you need and somebody with the verifiable skills to do what you need. Roger. David. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. That was just a pile of inf information and it was great information Good. too. Thank you. So let me click this because now that I've thanked you, you and I have to thank Way Ion, Ion Connect, Connect for making this production.